So today we're going to show you not only the digital side of this solution, to show you how easy it is for you uh, to be able to teach your course through this tool, how easy, simple, interactive, and I would say fun it is to, for your students to follow along the uh, course and be able to uh, do all the experiments that you're supposed to do and uh, basically bridge that gap between the theory and application. Also, on the other hand, we're going to show you uh, that how you can have a very simple portable product in your living room as a professor, I would say, or in your home office and uh, be able to broadcast that on, broadcast all the experiments online and show students how close is the, the online experience to actual physical, um, to having a physical hardware um, experience. Uh, Paul is going to give you a demo about, demo about it and he's going to go through the details of um, this new solution that uh, we are offering. And just to let you know, both of the physical hardware and also the interactive, the digital interactive lab, they come with a full instructor courseware, instructor resources and courseware for students, which basically saves uh, the professor's time and uh, will remove that headache of uh, building the new material for the course. Uh, before spending more time on this part of the introduction, I'm gonna pass it to Paul and uh, please take a note of all your questions and we would love to have a chat afterwards um, about all the questions or concerns that you have. Enjoy the webinar, thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you, Aryan. Thank you, uh, Lab Midwest, uh, Matt and Melissa and then the whole team for uh, inviting us here to speak uh, to your customers and to your, um, you know, the, the overwhelming requests coming in, I'm sure, uh, like, like you guys have putting on this webinar and we have as well, Quanser, um, a lot of our customers, a lot of our colleagues that we've been working with for the 30 plus years that we've been in this business are coming to us and with, the, you know, a very similar request. Uh, the university has um, decided to, to go online and to build a platform for them to continue to deliver their lectures um, online and, and they're all moving to do so, what's being left behind is the labs. How do you bring these labs that everyone's invested in and everyone's put in a lot of effort as part of that curriculum, how do you bring that experience online? Um, and then as an extension to that, uh, how do you continue doing research? Well, a lot of the research that our uh, customers do with Quanser um, is on physical hardware. How do you facilitate the continuation of that research online? So really, you know, I think this is a, a common uh, question right now and it's something that regardless of sort of how we come out of this phase of, uh, of, of this pandemic, these are things that are going to linger on. You know, I, I think we're going to see uh, an evolution of how do you leverage digital, virtual, remote, or online content, and how do you slipstream it into your offering so that, you know, in the case that this has to happen again, you're, you're not left, uh, you know, standing, standing uh, around, but also um, how do you actually build this into the curriculum? So that's where a lot of this has really come to the forefront. And so, um, you know, Quantum Interactive Labs was basically Quantum's response to this overwhelming request day in and day out uh, since the crisis hit, uh, hit us so a couple months ago. Of how do we enable you as our customers and then professors to deliver exciting engineering concepts remotely while still providing as much as uh, the, that lab experience uh, as well. So there's, you know, lectures are one part of it, the other part of labs, and uh, that's where we come in. And, and that's what uh, hopefully uh, over the course of the next little, little while, we can introduce you to our roadmap and how we bring that um, power to, to you to give on to your students. All right, so uh, just for those of you who aren't aware of, of who we are and who Quanser is, and then we've been working with Lab Midwest for, uh, like Matt said, just over a year and a half now, and uh, looking forward to, to you know, getting to know uh, them even more and definitely their customers and, and you, yourselves as, as Lab Midwest customers. We'd love to have a dialogue and get uh, introduced to you to find uh, ways that we can continue to work together as well. Um, so Quanser, uh, you know, again, very similar to, to Lab Midwest, we are an academically focused company. We have been around for over 30 years um, and strictly in academia, predominantly universities and, and engineering granting programs. Um, but obviously a lot of our products, there's a lot of overlap to, uh, to, to colleges and it's, you know, the two year and four year programs as well. Um, and our name is, I mean, that, that's sort of encapsulated right in our name. So Quanser is an amalgamation of the two words, question and answer. You put them together and that's, uh, that's where we come in. And, uh, you know, we want to provide you um, 
solutions so that you can challenge your students, challenge yourselves as researchers to ask those questions and working with Quantra products, get to the answer. Um, so, so what do we do? So who is Quantra just before we dive into the Quantra Interactive Labs that we uh, just recently released? Um, just to give you some pedig uh, pedigree of, of who we are. So we've been in the market for 30 years. This is what we do. Everything we believe in, we believe engineering is a physical applied science. And we believe that hands-on education, hands-on experiences of taking these concepts from the lecture and actually seeing them come to life in the lab is a huge part of any engineering experience, be it a two-year program, four-year graduate in research, regardless of whatever one of those programs uh, somebody happens to be in, a hands-on experience is pivotal to giving them that full-blown um, education and, and, uh, and, and research pedigree through it. Um, so, so, you know, so what that's, that's kind of always been a, a big part of what we do. And we've always had sort of this duality in academia of being, uh, you know, really working with, um, many institutions around the world and many different research topics. And anytime somebody wants to publish a, a graduate paper, be it a master's or, or, uh, the PhD paper, they often find that by working with Quantra and validating on our platforms and leveraging our solutions gets them to publication that much faster, that much uh, more impactful because they're not reinventing the wheel. They're not creating the hardware that there's not much research there. They're actually leveraging the hardware and leveraging the software that comes with it to um, achieve you know, whatever their goals uh, are at the end. The other part, and I think this is where, um, especially what we're talking about today come, comes to mind is uh, undergraduate education. So we have for 30 years, I've been providing, you know, the, the aha moments in the lab where you teach something in a classroom, but until they actually see it come to life um, in the lab, it hasn't been distilled and hasn't been really cemented in their understanding as a student. And so, um, you know, working with Quantor, uh, we find a lot of these uh, forward-looking institutions, and these are just a handful, um, you know, really leverage our hardware in the lab and even bring it into the, into the lecture as well as, as these technologies start to blend a bit more. Um, you can actually mix a lot of it. And that's kind of where we're going to be talking about today as well. So just some numbers, uh, you know, over 2,500 academic institutions globally in the middle, there's our founder, Jacob Karian, and uh, he, he created the company because he saw the need. He was teaching a course on control systems at the University of British Columbia uh, in Canada, where we're from. And he found, even though control systems is a very real practical science or, or discipline of engineering, the mathematics quickly got uh, fairly abstract. And without a piece of uh, equipment to cement the concept, um, the students were just getting lost in the math. And that's really, again, part of our DNA and genesis uh, of what we do. And everything that we've provided can always be distilled into sort of these four key points. You know, we truly believe, like I said at the beginning, that a hardware experience is a big part of what makes engineers engineering. Um, you know, you need to have that physical system and, and understand the physical phenomenon around it to really um, apply the sciences that, uh, that you're learning in the class. Um, so, you know, robust and expandable, repeatable hardware is sort of where we make our, our name. Um, and then we complement that with an open architecture software because, you know, the, the world of software is ever evolving, as, as you all know, and you want to provide uh, students that rich experience, be it something more theoretical like a MATLAB interface or Simulink interface versus something a bit more, um, you know, centered around coding like Python um, or C++, for example, or be it LabVIEW if they want more of an industrial setting. So regardless of the software environment that you as the professor or the, the college has decided on, our, our solutions are open and, and documented in a way that they can plug in fairly seamlessly in, in many of these platforms. Um, and then the sort of the third part that uh, completes our offering is the fully documented experiences and, and curriculum. So, you know, um, like Matt said, you know, Lab Midwest prides themselves on curriculum. That That's kind of, you know, a big part of our differentiation as well in our space of control systems, mechatronics, and robotics. It's those fully documented uh, content that we provide with the solution that really differentiate us from, uh, you know, doing it themselves or finding or buying parts online and trying to cobble something together. It's we've thought it out and we made sure that it's completely academically aligned um, to bring those concepts to life. And so that's where the academic alignment comes into place. And then finally, uh, with all of our techniques, be it for undergraduate or graduate work, um, you know, we highlight sort of these modern 
uh, tools of the trade or modern uh, approaches to engineering um, in our domains, uh, be it you know model based design, which is a, a big a big buzzword, and uh, rapid controls prototyping as well. So what uh, I hopefully that the video streams uh, with with decent quality uh, over here. So what I'm showing here is these are our digital assets. So along with a lot of our um, hardware and, and software assets, we've been putting together these, uh, you know, some IP and some technology to be able to bring some of these concepts, you know, to present them in a more um, immersive way. So we leverage the Unreal uh, gaming engine. We have a lot of our products actually fully modeled both virtually and dynamically in this environment. And so we've had this technology for a while and a lot of it, you know, we use for promotional material and, and proof of concept, but really the power behind it is that it's, it's a very um, high fidelity model or representation of what our products actually do and, and behave like. And so we'll get into how we leverage this technology um, in, in what we're showing you today. Um, over and above that, we've also had this mobile technology we call Qdex. And, and basically what Qdex uh, has been, and we've developed it for the past five years, is an ability to rapidly deploy STEM content onto any mobile device. So instead of having to write a full mobile app on your own to, to teach, you know, something as uh, straightforward as uh, polynomials on, uh, you know, to, to high school students or um, projectile motion as part of a dynamics or physics class. Um, that's pretty difficult to do if you want to start from scratch. But what Qdex allows you to do is gives you the building blocks to deploy this STEM focused content really quickly. And so, you know, these were IP and technology that we've had in the bag for a while and, and, and finding, looking for ways to sort of bring it to market and, and uh, you know, the opportunity right now to, uh, and the need, the dire need to actually leverage some of these tools remotely to deliver these lab concepts. Um, it's sort of the perfect storm. It all came together and it made sense for us to really uh, pull these out of our sort of technological uh, uh, shelves and actually bring them out and, uh, and, and come up with uh, Quantor Interactive Labs. At the end of the day, this is exactly what Quantor has always done. And so, uh, you know, this is uh, one of our, our focal points is bridging that gap between theory and practice to allow you to, as a professor, to deliver the great content in, in whatever medium, obviously the lecture hall is the, the classic way, but now obviously this is going online. The harder part is, and that's where we're going to come in and talk about, is how do we take that, you know, content and, and those concepts that you've just learned about remotely and how do you bring them to life remotely, being knowing full well that the ideal experience is for them to come in and touch it and feel it and, and see it in action in the lab. And so, you know, that's uh, what we're going to be talking about with Quantor Interactive Labs and how do you allow them to iterate on, on that as well. So um, some of you might know, uh, we've actually just released uh, um, experience control. It is a our answer to all types of control. Uh, customers of the uh, operating co operating commonly in the lab. Obviously we had uh, knowledge in this domain, especially in our first department and uh, pedagogy. So we basically leveraged all that activity and provided it regardless and this was around before sort of the the crisis hit and so you, now you get an, an idea of some of the the IP technologies that we've had um, at the end of the day you know what we do as a company regardless if it's hardware software you know content or, or uh, this digital um, technologies is regardless of where the customer is we want to work with them and stand with them as they drive towards success so in this case success is how do I 
how do I take what I used to do and I can no longer do and still enable my myself and my staff and uh, to deliver high impact courses, engineering courses to students and allow them to get their credits that they are, uh, that they need to, to move on in their uh, careers, but without shortchanging them um, with, with that experience. And that's really what we want to talk about today. And so, you know, you know, bring that all together, uh, we released this uh, solution called Quantum Track for Labs. And I'll go through some demos uh, with it as well. Um, so what is it basically? At a highest level, it is full, rich, interactive experiences, um, you know, for the lecture and the lab. And so the idea is that we've digitized a lot of our hardware and provided the pedagogy or the lab experiences, um, you know, around it, around the digital system. So Whereas before we'd have one of our products where, where uh, students would go in and go through a sequence of experiences in the lab, we've taken that whole offering and now give it to them in a virtual uh, application. So, uh, you know, it's available on iOS devices, available on um, Android devices and on Windows and Macintosh as well. So regardless of whatever computing platform they have or, or a mix of computing platforms that they also want, they're going to have the same type of pedagogical experience on any of those. And I'll, I'm going to show you some exa examples on all of them. Um, really the, uh, you know, obviously we wanted to be proud. We're, we're very proud of what we developed and we leveraged a lot of our pedagogy and IP. Um, the other part that the driving force in putting this together so quickly is we wanted this to be deployable tomorrow, meaning that we wanted this to be so easy to deploy that you didn't have to involve IT infrastructure in the university. A lot of people just simply cannot have anybody go to the institutions anymore, let alone go through and, and you know, reconfigure uh, assets and, and access and so on. We wanted this to be something that you can point your students to immediately and get them working, you know, and having those lab experiences immediately as well. And so that was a big driving force with it. Um, having said that, we also wanted these to be completely scalable. So there is no real limit in, in uh, how many students can access this and, and interact with these um, over time. So here's a, uh, you know, a, a quick sample. I'm going to play sort of these two videos and hopefully they, they come across well uh, as well. What you see on, <coughs> excuse me, on the left side is the um, interactions and experiences on the mobile platform. Um, and so you go through delivering some of the concepts and really, you know, at a high level, because the lab is where the, uh, the concept uh, is, is really reinforced. And so the lecture is where the, the concept is introduced and the students understand it. It gets reinforced with some of the um, experiences in the, in the lab. And then finally, they interact with, with the hardware. So you can see here, you know, the one on the left is the mobile one. The one on the, on the right is the desktop uh, application. So they look slightly different. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go through an example. But essentially, the, the experience and the pedagogy is exactly the same. And that was done, again, on purpose. Um, we have more computing power on the uh, on PC and Macintosh, and so we gave a more immersive experience there. Obviously, on the mobile, um, you get the same pedagogical experiences. The the graphics and interactions aren't as uh, involved as they are on the on the PC, but essentially they get the full um, the full picture and and has a lot of the content uh, to be exactly the same, so that they can spend the time and really distill some of these concepts that we're presenting to them. All right. So, so what, what are some of the uh, topics we're covering? And so what we're doing right now, um, again, we want to get this out very quickly. And so in a matter of weeks, we released two of our most, uh, you know, uh, popular products uh, and, and curriculum. And so our servo, our, our cube servo two, that's our introductory level control system experiment that will come out um, with, <clears throat> excuse me, three different lab exercises that they'll be able to, to run through. So very similar from uh, what you can expect. Traditionally, um, on our website, we have uh, over 20 different lab experiences that can be done just on the Cube Servo 2. We've picked three right now just so that you can get up and running. And obviously, we'll be adding more as, uh, as the next few weeks roll out. Um, and then something a bit more involved uh, is the, the Quanzer Aero, which you know, presents some aerospace-based content and, and concepts. And so we're um, releasing that as well with uh, three different experiences there. Um, but coming, you know, soon thereafter is going to be um, two other sort of uh, products that you can have lab experiences around. So one of them is being the more advanced uh, add-on to the cube. So the, the nice thing with our cube is that you can add on an inverted pendulum 
uh, on the top, and then that now makes it a more um, difficult plant to uh, stabilize and balance. And a lot of the more modern techniques or graduate uh, related concepts like state feedback and uh, state space modeling and so on come into play. And then soon we will be also launching our Quantzer arm. And so we wanted to digitize and give experiences around the Quantzer arm. Um, things like, you know, joint control, task-based control, and kinematics, the H par parameters, and so on um, as well. So, the, so you'll see some of these things coming down the pipe as well. Um, all right. So I'll, uh, what I'll do now is I'll stop sharing my screen until I get all the, I want to do a live demo. And though those are always interesting, especially uh, at best of times. And now sitting in my home office will be even more interesting. So, uh, um, you know, bear with me for a few minutes while I set that up and I'll share my screen again. Um, in the meantime, I mean, maybe we can field some questions uh, about it before I, I dive into the, the real time demos as well. Sure, if anybody has any questions about the uh, anything that Paul has talked about so far, um, go ahead and type them in and we will field those questions while we wait for the, the live demo. Thank you, Melissa. This is uh, Pasha speaking. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to be chatting with you all. And maybe while we wait for the questions and for Paul to get set up, uh, I just noticed that when Paul was playing uh, the video and uh, speaking about the Experience Controls app, uh, the music on the video might have prevented some of us from hearing what Paul was saying in the background. So just to review that, basically, Paul was showing the Experience Controls app, which is something that we released a few months ago in the form of an interactive textbook for teaching controls. And uh, what you saw there was a glimpse into the app and the depth of the content that, uh, that is there when, when it comes to bringing a textbook to life and making it interactive. So not only it has all the theoretical and background content that you could imagine a control textbook offers, but now everything when it comes to images, graphs, simulations uh, becomes interactive and students can in real time start interacting with the content. And uh, what we are showing here today is kind of a continuation and extension to that. Experience Control is its own application. It's living on the uh, Apple and Android uh, <clears throat> stores. It can be downloaded for free for, uh, for by, by anyone. So we certainly encourage you guys to use that and to, to check it out. But what we are releasing here today and showing you guys in terms of the Kwanzaa Interactive Labs is certainly designed to act as a remote learning module for uh, teaching concepts that Paul mentioned. So I, I hope that that uh, covers what Paul was mentioning. Uh, while the video was playing. With that, we still look forward to receiving your questions and uh, also looking forward to seeing Paul's demo. All right. Um, thanks, Pasha. And uh, yeah, we, if there are any questions, we can field them now. I can continue as well. Um, hopefully, everybody can see a bunch of different windows on my screen right now. Yes? Yes, we okay. can. Yeah, okay, cool. perfect. Um, so, <clears throat> so what I'll show you first is um, this is the uh, the one on the right. So the one that's moving is our Quantum Interactive Labs. And so this is now available for free, um, uh, you know, as a download from our website. So just go to quantum.com. There'll be the first banner there that, that pulls you right into um, the download page. And you simply download it and, and point your students to download it. And once they get it, then they'll be presented. I'll just sort of show you what uh, when you launch it. Right now, there are these two experiences that uh, that they or lab uh, products you can go through. This will be filled out to include some of the, the pendulum and the robotic arm, possibly more as well. And so, um, you know, the <clears throat> the instructions that come with it, and so all of these come with uh, lab resources. So, in terms of laboratory guides that you can send out to your students, they'll be simply instructed to go through. So, for example, we're going to do something very simple, just the PD tuning of a control system here. And so that's in the position control module. When they open it up, they'll be presented sort of this type of interface where you can actually fly around, zoom in and, and see the product, um, you know, in 3D space and, and interact with it uh, 
you know, this is a, a simple one, but the more complicated ones will be nice to get different screenshots. If you get lost in the screen, you can uh, come back there from different views and see the, uh, the product from different views. And then over here, you simply start um, the model and you'll see that it's behaving in a certain way. And so, um, you know, the exercise here, for example, is how do you, you know, with it's doing what you want it to do, and I'll show a different view, it's getting to where I want it to get to. It's just over about 50 degrees from zero degrees and also the jumps, but it's getting there with some um, ringing or some overshoot. And so how do you get rid of that? You either increase the derivative gain, you can see it's getting rid of that, or you decrease the, the P gain. Um, so that that's you know one of the examples of, of this. Obviously, this was a very accelerated experience through it, but basically um, this particular one, the student has gone through and modeled the system itself. So they've come up with a transfer function that describes the model of the um, servo. And then they are asked that based on that model, you know, calculate the appropriate P and D gain to give you a specific response. And so they go through that and they uh, model it right uh, and, and they implement it right here. And what we have is uh, an ability to, to look at, you know, based on the model that you've defined or we've guided you towards, it kind of behaves fairly well. Once you switch it to the actual system, and so we've modeled the actual pendulum that we have, you get a bit more of a, of a different response. And so what I want to show that to put your attention now, um, you know, another, a, a very interesting use case with all of this, and I'll just sort of, uh, let me just bring this down. Bring these down. All right. Um, so what you'll see over here, I'm just gonna put this aside. Um, if you guys can see my Simulink diagram on the left. So this diagram is the one that's actually running uh, live as we speak. You have the plot on the bottom that I'm running and you also have the, um, the camera. So this is the camera of the queue plugged into my PC as we speak. Uh, you have the model that's running in Simulink uh, and then the plot of that data. So if I disturb this with my my hand, you can see that the plot, you know, and reacts uh, accordingly, and it's running, uh, it's running all in real time. And so, what we wanted to show you here is an ability to say, once you're actually in the um, in the actual uh, lecture, delivering it online, one possible use case of doing this is actually having a setup like this um, with the professor. So let's assume that I'm a professor. I want to teach or, or walk them through that experience, but right here with the experience that they're given, you don't actually see the code, the underlying code. Whereas in, you know, in general, all of our products, like I was mentioning, have an open interface to them. And so here you can actually, as a professor, use one of our models. So this is just the one over here is a PD controller. So I have P as one and a D as zero, um, but you can actually walk them through the derivation of that, how you can put it together and what exactly each component is doing. Um, and actually show them, you know, those interactions in real time here. So for example, if I say my P, my P gain is three, well, now I'm going to get um, some ringing there as well. And if I come back here and I make my P gain be three and I run it, you know, you can see that it's actually getting similar results. Um, if you want to be even more accurate, you can see if I swap it out to actual, then my results are actually quite bang on. And, and so the students are then asked to go through um, and, and they, you know, do the exercises there that way. But the power of actually doing this, um, you know, through a lecture where you can actually show them the full experience, show them the actual piece of hardware by camera, you can uh, share your screen as a lecture and show them the underlying code in Simulink and the responses that you're getting in Simulink and how they compare to the theoretic or to the, uh, the digital model that the students are playing with. This is yet another way of really bringing those concepts to light um, and, and adding a different dimension of still bringing the hardware into the classroom, um, and, but still delivering it remotely, having the students uh, follow along um, virtually as well. So that just, you know, one, one example of how you could do this uh, remotely, but I'll, I'll show you um, some other aspects of it here as well. So if I go back here, again, once you download it and then it's a simple uh, executable that you, uh, that you run, so there's no installer or there's nothing um, you know, very difficult on it, we want to make this as simple as possible. You download a zip, unzip it and, and run an executable. 
Um, and then once you run that executable, you're presented with, uh, with this screen where you can go through. So if you want to do something a bit more involved, let's take a look at, you know, gain scheduling, for example, on the air. And, uh, and again, this is our um, 3D environment. So you can walk through and then look around. And plus, you can have these different views if you want to see it. And similar to the previous one, um, there's a whole bunch of exercises that they go through um, to do it. And so, you know, when it turns on, then you can see different behavior that's happening. In this case, it's going back and forth. Um, it's just yawing back and forth. You can increase some of these gains to get different responses. Um, and you can say that this is the way that this is architected is you can actually have two different sets of gains. And so one for going up and another one for coming down. And you can show the differences between um, one to the other and how you can, you know, change your model um, in more ways than the, than the simple, you know, PID loop, for example. And so all of these, again, come with fully documented curriculum, fully documented um, instructor resources as well. So once, you know, we, we're trying to give you as instructors all the tools you might need to be able to um, actually bring a lot of these concepts um, to life as easily as possible, right? So we want to, we give all the instructors all the material that they would need, all the exercises that uh, we would uh, suggest to their students. So you're simply just pointing your students to either download the apps uh, on, the, on the app stores or on our website for the PC-based apps and the Mac-based apps um, and just give them the, the resources to walk through those experiences um, on their own. And plus, if you really have a, a lecturer that wants to go that extra mile, they can incorporate the real hardware into their um, lecture as well, like I just did, and, and provide sort of a side-by-side -side comparison of one versus the other.